Good evening and welcome to the San Bruno City Council and San Bruno Public Financing Authority meeting of October 24, 2017. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Vicki? Yes. Councilmember Marty Medina? Here. Councilmember Rico Medina? Here. Councilmember O'Connell? Here. Vice Mayor Ibarra? Here. Mayor Ruane? Here. Director Marty Medina? Here. Director Rico Medina? Here. Director O'Connell? Here. Director here. Ibarra <laughs> and Director Ruane. Here. Uh, Mark Zaffirano, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a number of announcements this evening. Uh, the first one is, is Nancy Krause here? Mr. Mayor, I don't see uh, Mrs. Krause in the audience. Uh, the statement that she wished to provide is a little bit lengthy, but um, I believe she would appreciate it if um, I was able to read it. That's fine. And I'd be happy to do that if it's a yeah, council's please. interest. It will take me just a second to okay. find it. So if you wanted to go on to one of the other All right. items, I can, we can come back. We'll hold the first announcement. The second one is uh, Red Ribbon Week. And I have, that's why we're wearing these red ribbons. Chief, would you uh, walk us through that, please? Yes, sir. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Uh, once again, the City of San Bruno is pleased to join the State Attorney General's Office in participating in Red Ribbon Week from October 23rd, which was yesterday, through the 31st. Um, red, Ribbon, red Ribbon Week is a national program that began in 1985 in response to the murder of a DEA agent. Um, angered parents and their children began wearing red ribbons to raise awareness of the destruction that drugs can cause. Over the years, uh, the Red Ribbon has evolved into not only raising this awareness, but including a pledge or a commitment by our communities to remain drug free. Uh, the Police Department would like to thank um, the San Bruno Park School District and staff from all the city departments for supporting and participating in, the, in this very worthwhile cause. And if folks are interested in more information, they can visit redribbon.org or the Police Department social media sites, including uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Nextdoor. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chief. Connie, are you ready yet? I am. Okay. Um, again, I apologize in advance. Uh, it's, it, this is a little bit lengthy. Um, this is a statement from Superintendent Stella Kemp, um, and uh, I'll read it in its entirety. Uh, it, we're doing this tonight, obviously, as part of our partnership with the school district in the interests of good quality public information. Um, dear San Bruno community, beginning my third month as superintendent of the San Bruno Park School District, I must pause long enough to send out a big thank you to our city for the many ways in which you have demonstrated support for me and our San Bruno youth. I'm a firm believer that schools and community are one unit and partnerships with all sectors of the community are essential to helping children reach their maximum potential. I am very impressed with the past two years of concerted effort by the district to better connect with city and county leadership, service clubs, the Chamber of Commerce, and the business and corporate community. The results have been awards and grants, donations, programs, projects, and partnerships that are flourishing. It is important for the community to know about the support our students and teachers are receiving from these partners. We tell the story in our triannual reports to the community, but I want to capture it all here in one big thank you message. Business partnerships in public schools enable students to expand their horizons to see and experience the world, the workplace, and what opportunities lie ahead for them. These partnerships make schools stronger. Examples of solid relationships we enjoy with the business community are evident with the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce bringing businesses and ideas to the district for collaboration and fundraising. Walmart sponsored the district's Run to College program helped fund Community Day, and also joined Hands on the Bay Area to enhance the exterior of our schools. San Bruno Lions Club provides free vision screening to our students. San Bruno Rotary helps with Parkside Sister City Exchange with students in Narita, Japan, through the, through, uh, through, in Narita, Japan. 
through San, the San Bruno Education Foundation, the San Bruno Community Foundation, has funded a music initiative making music instruction available to all public school students in San Bruno, including at Cappuccino High School. Also through the Education Foundation, the Welsh Family Foundation is funding numerous programs such as music in preschool and district school field trips. The Danford Foundation has been generous with support for STEM and math. Recology San Bruno volunteers to teach students about protecting the environment. The city partners with our schools on library and recreation services and invites our talented students to perform at city meetings and events. The San Mateo County Board of Supervisors provided funding for PE at several of our schools. Peninsula Healthcare District has funded a student health center and the San Bruno Education Foundation. The fundraising arm of the district provides ongoing support of programs and projects. The presence of YouTube, Google, in our city has given a significant boost to our school community with conversations ongoing about future endeavors. For example, a grant from YouTube is helping to expand STEM education Volunteers from Google work with students at our schools to teach code world and coding clubs. Google hosted an all-day computer science first training for sixth graders at Parkside. YouTube hosted an all-day visit at their headquarters for 100 of our students. Google provided 3,000 pairs of safety glasses for our students and staff to watch the eclipse. YouTube is hosting the second annual Teachers for Cash uh, our teachers class cash for class event at Nueve sponsored by the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce honoring our teachers. Google volunteered through hands-on Bay Area to create mural art and refurbish, refurbish gardens at several campuses before opening of school. Google provided a grant to the city for Community Day which is enjoyed by San Bruno families and YouTube is helping to fund with the San Bruno Community Foundation, a pedestrian safety initiative that will see in installations of flashing beacons and crosswalks at two of our schools. Google's Public Affairs Director for Northern California volunteers on the board of the directors for the San Bruno Chamber of Commerce. The dots strongly connect the corporate, business, and philanthropic community with the San Bruno Park School District. We will continue to strengthen these partnerships and develop new ones. As the district embarks on a new chapter and its legacy to, con to create schools for tomorrow, providing 21st century learning for St San Bruno youth, we will need you and our community partners more than ever. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, thank you again for all you do for the children of San Bruno. No doubt about it, San Bruno is the city with a heart. One can see it manifest in these partnerships inside as well as outside of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Connie and Stella and Nancy. Uh, our third item uh, to announce is Recology. Kirsten has uh, an announcement to make. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, it's Recology's intention in this next year to definitely, and moving forward, to kind of visit the council and give you updates on how things are going. So I thought it was imperative that I bring to you tonight our new Way Zero Specialist, Samantha Carr. She's gonna give you a brief little update on who she is, and then she's gonna talk about our Coats for Kids program. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I am here this, here this evening to introduce myself. My name is Samantha Carr, and I am the new Way Zero Specialist at Recology San Bruno. A little bit about myself, I attended the University of Oregon in Eugene, Oregon, and I gra graduated with a degree in environmental science. Over these past two years, I participated in an AmeriCorps program called Civic Spark, and I was placed with the City of Richmond City Manager's Office. During my fellowship, I worked on many of the city's zero waste initiatives. A couple of highlights, I designed and implemented a project to add recycling receptacles in their parks and along public right-of-ways. I implemented organics recycling at some of the city's community centers, and I assisted with one of the local high schools in increasing their recycling participation and starting an organics program. 
My role as a waste zero specialist is to assist residents and businesses in reducing waste, increasing recycling, and helping businesses to navigate the state mandated recycling laws. We are also excited to remind everyone that our 21st annual Coats for Kids drive is currently underway. We have our coat collection bins out in the community and we are pleased to announce that U2 has also joined us this year and is conducting their own internal collection as well. Mark your calendars. The coat giveaway day is on Wednesday, November 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. and it will be at the American Legion located at 757 San Mateo Avenue. We hope you can all stop by and be a part of this heartwarming experience. Thank you all, and I look forward to meeting each of you personally. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, Marty, you had something about uh, Halloween. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Marty. Before that, do you want to tell people what Coats for Kids is and where they can leave their coats off? Yeah, so there's various locations, and we can email a flyer if you'd like that has all the locations. Um, what Coats for Kids is, is we collect used, gently used or new coats, and then we give them away to kids. Um, and these coats that we collect, they can be um, from child to adult size. Um, the goal is to get kids as many coats as possible, or to get as many kids coats as possible. Um, and then we can send out a flyer with all the locations. I don't remember them, all of them off the top of my head, um, but we can definitely follow up with that. Okay, thank you. I, I know for sure one is at City Hall, and I believe one is at the library, Tim, and one is at the City Library, so mm -hmm. we, for sure we have them there. And I think, I thought, is one here? It's the Senior Center? Yeah, they're definitely around the community. They're at La Petite Lane, they're at Berkshire Hathaway, and if residents are watching and they do have coats, but they don't have a means to get them to one of those locations, they can certainly call Recology Customer Service, and we can have somebody pick them up. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. And, I, and I believe the last day to collect is the 31st? 31st, but our, since our distribution isn't until the 15th, we'll certainly take coats up until the night before, just so okay. we have enough to give away. Thank you. And, right. and may I have one more? You may. Thank you. Um, our assistant city clerk, Vicki Hachet's daughter, actually started this 21, this is 21 years ago. <laughs> yep. Um, she saw a child who needed a coat and she had outgrown one and she encouraged her mom to start a program to do this and they've been doing it. They did it all by themselves for a long time and then the city got involved and then Recology got involved. So it's truly a homegrown, see a need and fulfill it kind of thing. So we're very proud of Rose. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Vicki. Thank you. My understanding is you'll accept a, a check also so you can purchase a coat if need be. We do, we do. There's always sizes that aren't always available and we don't want any child to go home without one. So if we find a child that there isn't a coat for them, we will uh, take their name and phone number and we will go purchase a coat on their behalf. Great, so. and make sure the flyer is given to the city clerk so we can get it on the city website. Absolutely. Okay, great, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Marty? Happy Halloween at Tan Fran Mall. <laughs> All right, so from 3.30 to 4.30, there's the Halloween goodie bag and raffle, tipic, uh, raffle ticket, uh, which they'll draw here, it says 4.30 in front of Old Navy. Um, children up to 10 in costume are eligible. If you have any questions, please call 616-7180. Uh, Should be a lot of fun. Hope Great. to see you there. Always is, a lot of fun for kids. I have a couple of uh, announcements here. The city of San Bruno is helping to sponsor um, donations. Our hearts go out to those affected by the recent North Bay fires. In conjunction with the San Bruno Park School District, the city of San Bruno is collecting donations for those affected to show our support to our neighbors in the North Bay. Items will be collected through November 8, 2017 and will be delivered to the Redwood Empire Food Bank or the Santa Rosa Salvation Army. There's a number of recommended items here and I think there's some flyers there at the, at the desk. Um, bins are located at the following city facilities, San, Fr San Bruno uh, City Hall, in the lobby, San Bruno Library, Rec Center, and the Cable Office. And monetary donations can be made online uh, or directly, and there's a couple of um, Redwood Credit Union and United Way Wine Country here, so um, 
we know what it's like to experience disaster uh, in a flash in San Bruno. This is uh, increased by factors of a thousand. So anything we can do as a city to help support their efforts, uh, I'd like to do that. And the, the city is sponsoring this with the school district. So it's very important. The other announcement, and, and Connie mentioned it briefly, is uh, the San Bernardino Chamber of Commerce Second Annual Teachers Cash for Class Reception in partnership with YouTube, the Welch Family Partnership, San Bruno Rotary, and the San Bruno Education Foundation. It's Monday, November the 6th, right here at 4.30 p.m., 4.30 to 6.30 at Nueve Restaurant, Mexican Bar and Grill at 851 Cherry in the Bay Hill Shopping Center. And San Bernardino businesses and the community at large celebrate San Bernardino Park School District teachers with this annual event providing them with donated bags of school supplies and donated $100 cash gifts to purchase additional supplies to enhance their teaching and student learning. It's, it's just a really, really nice event, so I encourage everyone to attend. And I think we have one more announcement. Connie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This will be shorter than uh, my previous statement on behalf of the school district. Um, Mayor Ruane, members of the City Council, and members of the San Bruno community, I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. The purpose of my comments are to announce that after 14 years of service as your City Manager, I have recently informed the City Council of my intent to retire in early 2018. It has truly been my privilege to serve this community as the capstone of my career in public service that now spans several decades. Over that time, it has been my special honor to have served in the capacity of city manager in three communities under the council manager form of government. Under this special system of governance, it is the city manager's responsibility to manage the municipal corporation and its broad range of operations to implement policy created by the City Council and to assure, to assure that the community's big picture needs and interests are properly addressed and assured. Working together as a team over the last 14 years, three examples of our accomplishment and the lasting results of the staff and the City Council partnership stand out for me as representing special points of pride. First, your vision to transform the former Navy site across from Tanferan to a modern, vibrant, mixed-use community with an emphasis on the creation of affordable housing was realized over a period of several years during which staff devoted its considerable professional and te technical expertise working tirely, tirelessly with the developer to address the myriad of detail and decisions to make that vision a reality. Today, the Crossing San Bruno is home to over 1,000 1, individuals and families, over 20% of whom receive the benefit of affordable rents secured into the long term. That development set the stage for our work more recently to develop and now, over the next many years, to implement our transit corridors plan to revitalize our downtown and the central business area of our community. Secondly, there is perhaps no better example of the success of our collaborative work effort than what happened during and since the tragic 2010 gas pipeline explosion that catapulted San Bruno into the national spat spotlight, even as we worked hard just to handle the community's immediate needs in the wake of disaster. Building upon the City Council's direction that the city right the wrong that had occurred in San Bruno, and that we make sure that what happened here doesn't ever happen again anywhere, staff's work effort assured the establishment of a trust fund in the amount of $50 million to make sure that this city was not also financially damaged by the explosion and that we could put the town back together 
in the best possible way. And we assured that restitution was provided, again, to right the wrong by uh, negotiating a $70 million settlement with PG&E, an unprecedented action to make sure that we have the ability to move this community forward in ways that we may have only previously been able to dream about. Lastly, tonight, we have the opportunity to proceed and to take another action, another important action in a long series of initiatives uh, directed by the City Council to assure a strong and reliable utility infrastructure system. By considering the bond financing program that we bring to you tonight, you have the ability to develop a funding program that will allow us to proceed with the implementation and construction of many important water and sanitary sewer projects that will do just what you intend. Make sure that this community's underground infrastructure is not out of sight and out of mind, but that it is uh, revitalized and made to uh, assure the community's future into the long term with these essential services. I thank you for your trust, your confidence, and your support. As I transition to retirement over the next several months and beyond, I know that I will remain very proud of my connection with this very special community and acutely interested in the pro positive progress that I know San Bruno is poised to attain over the coming years. I look forward with great anticipation to your progress. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I have a lot of things to say, but I'm going to save them for another time, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, the long goodbyes are going to start yeah, now. We really, really appreciate all of your all of your efforts, and I think the council knows more than any any other group, or entity, or any other person how much you uh, you put your heart and soul into this city. So thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, presentations. There aren't any presentations this evening. Review of the agenda, I'd like to move, this no objection, item 11, which is a report of our Cultural um, and Arts Commission to right after public hearings. That's all right. Uh, item number six, approval of the minutes of the special and regular city council meetings of October 10, 2017. Any errors, corrections, or omissions? Seeing none to be approved as submitted. Item number seven is consent calendar. All items are considered routine or implemented earlier council action and may be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion, no separate discussion unless requested. Um, anything on consent? Through the chair. Irene. <coughs> I'd like to pull 7E, please. 7E. E. 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 Edward, e in Delta. No, E. E. Oh, e. I'm sorry. E in Echo. Okay. Anything else? Any if not, uh, move to approve the remainder of the consent. Second. second. Motion is second on the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 7E is accept a request uh, from Culture and Arts Commission Chair to declare vacancy due to the passing of a member and direct the city clerk to post the vacancy in accordance with state law and initiate the process for the appointment of a new member. Irene. Thank you. I just wanted to recognize again Carolyn Livingood, who was the member that passed away, her efforts with the Culture and Arts Commission. She was a founding member and <coughs> she worked very hard through these years to make it a viable commission. It's an honor to be on this commission. There's a lot of exciting things that can happen with it. Um, they have their own budget and they have a lot of ideas and a variety of things. It's not just paintings in a frame. They sponsor the uh, Shakespeare in the Park. They do the movies after um, the Friday afternoon movies. They do um, artwork in the library. There's a lot of things that they do. So um, if you're interested at all in this and making San Bruno a little more beautiful place to be, uh, please do uh, apply. Thank you. And with that, I'll move to approve. Second. Motion second to approve item 7E. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, before we do public hearings this evening, I want to thank the Garden Club for the flowers they always provide for us. 
Public hearing, if there aren't any this evening, we'll get right to item number 11, the annual report of the Culture and Arts Commission. <coughs> Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. I thought you were going to steal my thunder there with everything you said about the <laughs> what we do. Uh, I'm Pamela Gamble, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the uh, purpose of the Cultural and Arts Commission, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, please, Carrie. We are there. Uh, we are responsible for promoting artistic development of the community and really can you hear me okay thank you and preserving and also honoring san bruno's diverse cultural heritage that we have and our goals are to include acquiring and maintaining public art as well as sponsoring programs and events that enhance the quality of life for all of our San Bruno residents. Can you go to the next one? Okay, here are some of the accomplishments that I would like to review for 2016-17. Um, we hosted the International Children Art Exhibit from San Bruno's sister city, Narita, Japan. Hosted movies in the park, Shakespeare in the Park that just happened uh, just past the past Sunday. Uh, released an RFP and received applications for a signal art uh, project. We also resumed our library art gallery program. We invite every member of the community to come to the library in San Bruno to see it. Uh, and we also sponsored the Children Arts Project in conjunction with the Posey Parade and Community Day in the Park. And here we'll just go through some of the, what that looks like, if you would like to. Okay, uh-oh, we're doing it at the same time. Okay, so this is some of the artwork for um, the exhibit uh, with our sister city, Narita. And then our movies in, par in the park. This was our selection. We did put it up on the website and had input from the community to see what movies they would like to see. And then we showed Romeo and Juliet this past uh, Sunday. Hopefully some of you were able to go and attend it. It was a really good showing. And then here's some of the artwork uh, from our uh, library art gallery program. And then at our sponsorship of the children's art project in conjunction with the Posey Parade. This is what our balance is uh, for this upcoming year. And then here are some of our goals. What are we going to do now that we have money? Here are some of our goals for the upcoming year. We will continue the uh, gallery exhibit program at the library. We will host uh, our sister city again for 2018. And also the children's exhibit. We will continue with the movies in the park. So look out for the new selections for the upcoming year. We will do another uh, Shakespeare in the Park to continue that tradition. And uh, one of the hefty goals that we have for this year are the six traffic signal art projects, uh, including Caltrans permitting as necessary. That's a, a process that we've learned that you've <laughs> got to go through. But we're hoping to complete that in the upcoming year. Our sponsorship of the Children's Art Project uh, in conjunction with the Posey Parade, that is such a San Bruno tradition that we would like to share. And then to continue uh, just to develop our commissions, we meet every month. Uh, and so we will you know, come up with ideas. The community is always welcome. These are meetings that are always open to the public as well. So this, um, as everybody know, was a jewel of the San Bruno community, Carolyn Livingwood, who was a founding member of the Cultural and Arts Committee. And um, she was very instrumental in this community. We, at San Bruno, we lost a really respected and loved member. It was a loss for her family. It was a loss for San Bruno. 
and also a loss for our culture and arts community. She really gave a lot and really cared about San Bruno as a community. So um, we are really gonna miss her uh, so much. So I, I think that's it that I have as far as my presentation. So if that's it, I... We might have some questions. Any, okay. Any questions? Questions? Do you have any? any anyone? Ken? Uh, I was reading that uh, in the minutes, you, the utility box yes. artist, you went out to uh, an RFP to art, various artists, and have you selected an artist, and when, uh, in the we, coming year, what we can, can we expect? Okay, so that is a, a project that we are, the RFP has just gone out again. We did not feel that we received enough of of our, of, from the, our community, from the art community. We just didn't uh, get enough artists to reply. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we were making it available to everybody, getting that communication out there. So we wanted to kind of get more of, um, uh, more people involved in the process, if you will, to submit artwork. So we had a small showing in our first RFP that went out, so we did it again. So if we have any artists here or watching and has a vision for one of the boxes that I, I think there's, you can go to the website that we have to um, ensure that you kind of kind of read through if, you have, if you're an artist. It, you know, we new, young, old, everybody has a little artist in them. So we are, are happy to review your work at one of our meetings. Great, thank you. So that's still ongoing. Thank you, and I wanna, Marty, you have something? No. So I went to uh, Shakespeare in the Park and it was really great and uh, just wanted to thank you for the, all the work that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chair. you so much. Irene? Uh, have you reached out to the Skyline College art community and the Cappuccino art artists? You know, the student artists might be a, a venue to look at. Yes, I think um, we have uh, sent uh, information regarding the RFP is that what you're asking yes I'm sorry yes we made that uh, available to them we, we've tried to do some projects with Skyline and that's kind of in discussions and ongoing okay. but yes uh, I'll definitely make sure uh, if they have not already received it that they do get the offer to you know submit their artwork um, to our committee okay thank you thank you and for the public, uh, wonderful report, and you guys are doing great work. All of our commissions, boards, and committees are volunteer. They put in literally thousands of hours on their own uh, during the day, evenings, to, to make uh, this city great. And it's the lifeblood of what happens. It's all sort of almost all behind the scenes, but you guys do a wonderful job, and we can't say enough about you. So thank you very much, and thank the commission for us, please. Thank you so much. We are definitely trying to make our community in San Bruno stronger. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Item number nine is public comment on items not on this agenda. It is the council's policy to refer matters raised in this forum for act for, to staff for investigation and action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. Would anyone like to address the council under public comment? Yeah. Just tell us your name and your street, please. Sandra Perez Vargas, Mastic Avenue. I too wanted to remember Carolyn Livingood today. I met her when she was already very ill. And as ill as she was, she would still come out on Sundays, clean up San Mateo Avenue, and go through the task of letting us know what could be improved. And she really wanted San Mateo Avenue to be a clean destination for people. She wanted new magazine racks. She's been bringing that up for years. Those magazine racks are still there broken down. People can cut themselves on them. The garbage cans are falling apart. I think we can honor her in more than words, but in action. And I would love to partner with anybody who would like to really take on San Mateo Avenue. I've gone down there, I'd surveyed many of the merchants and what they would like to see from the city. And I know Marty is good friends with her, Rico. We helped garden for her when she couldn't. And maybe focus more on the area she also cared about. She saw the decline of the heart of San Bruno. It was, she didn't have to get involved with us. She was set aside from it but she felt for us for what we're living through, not being able to get on our driveways, garbage everywhere, and no consistent follow-up. So I, I, I want to remember Carolyn by giving something back to her. Thank All right, you. thank you. Anyone else under public comment? Okay, we're right into conduct of business. 
Item 10A is receive an oral report and review the status of local emergency related to the truck collision at the Senior Center and continuing declaration of local emergency. Connie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. We have a short uh, but I uh, hope positive report tonight on a number of accomplishments uh, leading to our ultimate ability to reopen the Senior Center with a fully functional main assembly room and stage. Um, during the period of time since my last report, uh, we have completed the construction of a partition wall just on the other side of this uh, sliding door that expands the space available in the main room for programs and activities. And we have, in fact, been able to expand the uh, attendance at the Thursday night bingo program operated by the Nutrition Site Council and to relocate and expand some of the programming that has continued up here at the Senior Center. The, con the construction contractor who was, uh, uh, gave us the best price and the best timeline to build the temporary wall has now been selected to complete the construction of, or reconstruction of the stage area that was damaged by the truck accident. And we are currently completing negotiations with that contractor towards the start of construction towards the beginning to middle of November. That construction is anticipated to take approximately two months. We're also pleased to report that the replacement of the entire floor surface in this main room will be part of the project that is funded by our insurance as well as the ADA, uh, the ADA components of the project that are required under the building code. So we look forward to uh, only a couple more reports over uh, the next two months as we move very quickly to full reconstruction of the center and restoration of all of the important programs our seniors rely on. Thank you. All right, thank you. Through the, through the chair. Okay. Connie, uh, there's been a few people that have complained about we've received letters about why is it taking so long and everything. And it's not just, and you can elaborate on this, it's not just a, a vehicle hitting the, hitting the, hitting the building. Uh, there was significant structural damage and significant damage, um, mainly that stage area. So there was time where had to hire an engineer and design professionals and things to do, to do documents. Sure. You know, for the con for the bidding and the contract. Sure. So even under the provisions of the emergency declaration, there are a number of actions that need to be taken, and there have been a few items that don't necessarily meet the eye that have had to be addressed. Um, the first is uh, hazardous materials cleanup that was the result of the accident and the leakage of some petroleum products um, in the dirt in the in the stage area. Um, we have. We have plans for the building. The original construction drawings for the senior center are available to us. That was a big benefit. But there are additional, there was significant, as you indicate, structural damage to, the, to the, that portion of the building. And it has required a detailed and comprehensive review of the structural uh, design, not only to determine uh, how to put it back together, but also to meet current building codes. Um, again, as we indicated then, there's been a, a little bit of time and effort involved in determining what components of the project would be included under our insurance settlement, and we're very pleased, as I indicated, to be able to say that uh, because of some damage uh, that was necessitated after to the floor area in front of the stage, that was caused as a result of the post-accident investigations, uh, we are able to look forward to being able to complete the entire floor, uh, resurfacing of the entire floor, which I think will give a, a fresh new look to the senior center and uh, uh, really brighten up the space so that it will be even better than it was before it was damaged. Okay. Uh, 10B. Adopt resolutions of the City of San Bruno City Council and the San Bruno Public Financing Authority Board of Directors to number one, approving 
the issuance and sale of water revenue bonds by the San Bernardino Public Financing Authority in the maximum principal amount of $13,500,000 to provide financing for improvements to the water system and approving related documents and actions and also approving the issuance and sale of wastewater revenue bonds by the San Bernardino Public Financing Authority in the maximum principal amount of $27,500,000 to provide financing for improvements to the wastewater systems and approving related documents and actions. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, we're pleased to be back uh, with our financing team tonight, represented by Jim Fabian at the far end of the staff table here, who will give a short staff report. We have a number of the financing team members here in the audience tonight, and both they as well as Mr. O'Leary and myself will be available to answer your questions at the conclusion of the report. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council and citizens of San Bruno. Uh, Jim Fabian with Field Monroe Lap and Associates, City's Municipal Advisor. We do have a short presentation that I will walk through uh, this evening. And at any point, if you have any questions, please let us know and we can address those at, at that particular slide. So again, we were in front of you on October the 10th for a study session where we laid out uh, where the city has been in looking at the, the needs of the wastewater system and the water system and how in the past on May 23rd, 2017, the city council adopted a five-year rate increase uh, for both the wastewater and water fund uh, which increased the rates by approximately 5% per year, uh, laid out a plan for the required investment in both the wastewater and water system, uh, identified the need to allow for debt financing to help minimize the year-to-year -year impact on the ratepayers. Additionally, we discussed uh, at the study session uh, the adoption of the capital improvement program by the City Council on June 27th. As part of that CIP program, there was an identification of $62 million of improvements for the water, wastewater system and approximately $45 million for the water system. Uh, these projects were anticipated to be constructed over the next five years, and as part of that CIP adoption, there was identified the need to use bond proceeds to help fund those projects. As I mentioned on October the 10th, uh, we had an extensive discussion about uh, the past actions of the council and the need now to move forward with the debt issuance process for the water, wastewater and water bonds. Uh, we were directed to come back in front of you tonight to deliberate on the required actions to move forward with the bond financing, and that's what we're here to discuss tonight. So uh, this evening, we'd like to again review the capital projects to be debt financed, both on the wastewater and water system, uh, look at the uh, preferred or recommended financing structure, look at the debt service requirements uh, that would be the result from the borrowing a look at the uh, legal and financing documents and walk through those with you, and then look at our, our schedule going forward. On this slide, uh, we have put together the list of the wastewater projects uh, to be financed through the issuance of the bonds. Uh, as uh, identified on the slide, you can see that these are preliminary cost estimates uh, subject to the final bid and award. Uh, we have identified uh, the projects with the asterisk to show which are mandated by the Baykeeper Consent Decree, and we have provided you with the status of the design uh, for each of the identified projects. And you can see that these projects identify and add up to $26.7 million, which is the net proceeds from the bond issue. Uh, as uh, was discussed earlier with the adoption of the rate study, uh, these projects were identified in the prior adopted rate study. I should also point out that these are bond finance projects, but the system improvements that there 
also be a lot of improvements that are funded through pay-as-you-go type of expenditures as well. On the uh, water side of things, uh, there, there, we do not have the consent decree here, but we have identified uh, these high priority projects to be funded through the issuance of, of the water bonds. As you can see, uh, we have added uh, the project status to show you where they are with the uh, design of each one of these projects as well. And again, these were identified in the adopted rate study and the uh, total cost is approximately 12.6 million. Again, there'll be additional PAYGO projects that will be funded on the uh, water system on a pay-as-you-go basis. So in looking at the debt structure, uh, as we talked about in the study session, we do have existing debt on the wastewater side. Uh, this actually goes back to 2002 when the city did a bond issue to finance improvements. Those bonds were re refunded in 2013. Uh, your finance team helped with that refinancing and uh, these bonds would be on the same lien level or priority as those bonds. Uh, the structure is set up where there will be no debt service reserve fund required. Uh, the, cover the minimum coverage requirement will be 1.25 times. Uh, they'll have fixed rate of interest. They'll be a 30-year term and will have level debt service and they're secured by the pledge of net revenues of the wastewater system. So all the revenues of the wastewater system minus the cost of operations and maintenance leaves net revenues and those are pledged to the repayment of the bonds. Based upon current bond market conditions, uh, we would estimate uh, that uh, we would have approximate debt service cost of a 1.5 million a year. The uh, anticipated true interest cost on the bonds would be 3.6%. As I mentioned, they would be 30-year bonds, uh, so the final maturity would be July 1, 2047, and the closing date is estimated to be on December the 6th. These are estimated uh, estimates right now. Until the bonds are actually sold, we're, we're working with our best estimate of what the actual interest rate will be. I, I wanted to note, too, that the uh, adopted rate study had assumed uh, that the, the the debt that would be issued uh, would be approximately 5.5%. So we're well within uh, the parameters that were set out in the adopted rate study. Turning to the coverage for the wastewater fund, what we do is we project out the next five years based upon the total revenues that were identified in the rate study, looking at the total expenses, calculating the net coverage, or of net revenues available, looking at the 2013 debt, the bonds that exist, and then the debt service on the anticipated bonds. And you can see there that we're, we have a very strong coverage and factoring in your existing uh, loans that you have with the state revolving fund, you, you have approximately three times coverage. And why that's important to you is that puts you in a position to go to the rating agency and get the strongest possible underlying credit rating. By showing uh, the fiscal strength of the wastewater fund, uh, we, we think we're going to be able to get into the AA rating category, which provides lower rates for the next 30 years to the residents of San Bruno. On the next slide, this is a discussion of the, the debt structure for the water fund. There's no existing debt on the water side, so we're creating a, a new debt structure for the water system. Uh, very similar in all aspects to the wastewater fund. No debt service reserve fund, a coverage covenant of 1.25 times. It would be a fixed rate borrowing as well, a 30-year term, and it would be secured by the pledge of the net revenues of the, of the water system. In, in looking at the rate study, uh, there was identified the potential need for a, a new borrowing in 2023 to provide the needed funding of additional projects over the 10-year period. What we've looked at today is borrowing requirements for the next five years. Again, this is our estimate of what that bond would look like uh, based upon current interest rates. 
Uh, our cost would be about $710,000 a year. Again, we're going to be very similar in credit quality to the wastewater fund in the AA category. We think we're going to be right around 3.6%. Uh, the um, final maturity would be on July 1st, 2047, and the closing date would be on December the 6th. And again, in the rate study, it was estimated that the cost of borrowing for for uh, identified projects would be about 5.5%. So we're well within that threshold. Now again, projecting forward on the water side of things, again, using the rate study that was adopted, the rate increases that have been approved, look, we calculate what the revenues would be for the next five years. Uh, we also look at our expenses in the system for the next five years and calculate our, what our net revenues would be and then use our existing projections of debt service to calculate our coverage. You can see on the water side, we have a little bit higher coverage, but again, this is building to provide you with the fl future flexibility to do a borrowing in 2023 to continue the capital improvement program uh, in, in the water system. One of the things we talked about on the 10th was interest rate environment that we're working in in October and uh, the good interest rate environment continues. Uh, rates are at or near historic lows from the standpoint of tax exempt municipal debt. On the far left, you can see where rates were back in 2014. Uh, they trended downward in 2016. We had a ramp up with the election results and the the change in market sentiment back in late 2016, but things have been very consistent so far in, in 2017 and put the city in a good position to lock in rates for the next 30 years. Uh, the next slide is just a graph to be able to show you on the far left, uh, year one to the far right, year 30, where rates have been historically. And on the, the thing that I'd like to point out to you is on the far right, you can see that 95% of the time rates have been higher. So only about 5% of the time rates have been lower. So for, for, for a 30 year borrowing, it's a very good time to try to lock in interest rates uh, right now. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's for the 30 year. Um, is it pretty much the same for a 10 year? It'd be a lower interest rate? By about a point? You would have a lower interest rate if you did a 10-year term. The reason we choose to do a 30-year term is because of the useful life of the assets. The assets which are being financed through the bond issue have a typical useful life of about 50 years. So you want to spread the cost of repayment of those assets over not only the current residents of San Bruno, but future residents and user of the system so that you have uh, that's typically why you use a 30-year term versus a 10-year term where everything would be up, loaded up front and more on the backs of existing residents and not future residents and users. Right. So looking at where interest rates are right now, as we talked about, uh, we are at a historically low interest rate environment. Uh, there is uh, a lot of speculation that the Fed will raise rates in December. Uh, with, if, if we went forward now, we would be in front of that rate increase that is set for the uh, December. Uh, it would allow us to capture that low rate and lock it in for 30 years. Uh, it also puts us in a, a position where we're doing better than what was anticipated in the rate study that was modeled to have a 5.5 percent interest rate. We're going to be well below 4%, which is very good. Uh, if, if rates increase by about a quarter of a percent, uh, that would equate to approximately $45,000 on average per year. Uh, and if you looked at that over a 30-year period, it's a, you know, a little over $1.2 million. If rates were to increase by a half a point or 50 basis points, that would be $95,000 a year or about $2.7 million. So you can see that uh, a change in interest rates does have a, a pretty significant impact on the, the rate payers and residents of San Bruno. Uh, wanted to walk through what's in front of you this evening in terms of our documents uh, from a legal and financial perspective. 
Uh, we do have two resolutions, one for the city council and one for the authority that would approve all the, the, the documents in front of you. Uh, the first one is the, oh, two, uh, yeah, right. Uh, as Jim mentioned to me, there's four resol resolutions, one for the water system and one for the wastewater side. Uh, we do have an indenture. Uh, the indenture is the document between the city and the trustee, which in this case is Union Bank. Uh, we have an installment sale agreement between the authority and the city where we lease uh, the projects and we agree to pay back uh, through the installment sale agreement on a semi-annual basis, the installment payments that are then used to pay bondholders. Uh, we have uh, probably the most important document in front of you tonight is the preliminary official statement. Uh, this is the document that the underwriter will use to market the bonds and provide information to potential bond investors. Uh, this document has been uh, deemed final for, for purposes of meeting the requirements of Rule 15 C212 of the Securities Act of 1934. Uh, it has been prepared with input from myself, other consultants, and city staff, and Jones Hall is acting as the Disclosure Council and preparing the preliminary official statement. Uh, we also have in front of you a continuing disclosure agreement, and this provides uh, the uh, bond investors the annual updated information uh, that you would provide to tell them about the, both the water and the wastewater system. Uh, then we have a bond purchase contract. Uh, this is the contract between the city and Prager and Company as your underwriter, where they agree, you agree to sell your bonds to them and they agree to buy them uh, from you and then resell them to the public. So tonight's action, we have the adoption of the resolutions that I mentioned. Uh, part of that includes the approval of the finance team members. Uh, it also de delegates to the city manager the authority to sign the bond purchase agreement under certain parameters that were identified in the resolution. It allows us to move forward with securing an underlying credit rating from S&P. Uh, we are scheduled to meet with Standard & Poor's on October the 26th. Uh, Connie, Jim, and Jimmy, and myself will be there. Uh, we've prepared a very detailed presentation to walk through with them uh, the financial strength of both the Wastewater and Water Fund and the city at, at, at large. Uh, also talking about the, the policy framework of the city. And uh, we, we think, uh, as I mentioned before, we'll be able to maintain that double A rating category that we have on the existing 2013 bonds. Uh, we're scheduled to uh, move forward with the sale of the bonds on November the 9th, uh, subject to change of market conditions, and then close right around uh, the December the 6th. And that's when the, the proceeds would be available for uh, the city to then start building the projects. Uh, lastly, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the uh, study session, uh, Jones Hall is the city's bond council and disclosure council. Uh, my firm, Fieldman Rollup and Associates, acts as your municipal advisor. The bond underwriters, Prager and Company, uh, the trustee is Union Bank, and then, as I mentioned, the rating agency is Standard and Poor's. And we're ready to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Any questions for our consultant, Marty? So I have a combination of comments and, and questions and I'm going to apologize now because we're quite lengthy. So indulge me for a bit. Um, Let's just may, may clarify with the mayor. I think I could wait till the end. Would be probably more appropriate because I don't think I'm going to get the answers in the next few minutes. So I think I'll wait till the end after public comment to, and, and to, to give all uh, this whole lengthy uh, commentary. Do you want to ask him first? The part that I guess this is for the city manager. 
and this is for the public, for them to understand. Um, I meet with the city manager every week, every Monday, whenever possible, unless there's a holiday. I've served on the subcommittee, the utility subcommittee with Councilwoman O'Connell. Um, so here's our background. We, meet with, we met with staff and the rate study consultant in March. After two revisions of rate increase choices, we recommended using the debt as detailed in the rate study on the, on the rate study at that time with the data at that time. And we chose and recommended to go with the five year, 5% rate increases in water and sewer to minimize the impact to our rate payers knowing that we we're gonna have to issue debt. So despite being on the subcommittee for the, the rate, uh, for the utility subcommittee, I didn't learn of the debt issuance until October 6th. So I'm already uncomfortable going into this, being on the subcommittee and not knowing much in advance what was going on. In fact, I was in shock on October 10th when we had the subcommittee or the study session on this debt issuance. And I expressed it in the hour long, untelevised, poorly advertised, but legal notification to the public of issuing 39.3 million in bonds costing $64 million over 30 years. To be, to be approved in two weeks. So my first feeling was, well, why now? How, how, did, this, how did this happen? I was very frustrated with the, what I felt, the lack of transparency in this process. A month ago, the council chose to select a consultant to help hire our city clerk. And that cost around 30,000. That was brought to the council to decide which firm to choose. I have nothing against the finance team, the underwriters, absolutely nothing. But I don't know how they were chosen. Shouldn't the choice been brought back to the council? How much money is everybody getting out of this? Is it in the hundreds of thousands? Is it in millions? Can somebody answer that question now? So I'm happy to respond to all of the issues that you've raised. Um, with all due respect to the surprise that you're indicating that you experienced, um, we did a little review of the records today and uh, there were actually 12 publicly noticed meetings beginning in February of 2017 over the course of which we discussed the need and the intent to issue debt to address the costs associated with the utility infrastructure and to uh, comport with the rate structure that the city council proposed, or I'm sorry, that the utility subcommittee proposed to the city council in March and that was ultimately approved by the city council in May of this year. Um, the specifics of the intent to proceed and the fact that staff was in fact moving to carry out the city council's direction <coughs> was discussed with the utility subcommittee at your meeting on October 23rd, I'm sorry, August 23rd of this year. Um, so, with all due respect, um, although we did not bring you the details of the financing until they had been adequately prepared and could be thoughtfully and comprehensively represented to the City Council on October 10th, um, I believe that the City Council has had adequate opportunity to know and to direct the City the staff's work to bring you uh, the proposals that we're bringing you tonight for approval. Um, regarding the selection of the consulting team that 
is, uh, is, is working on this financing. Um, we discussed at the October 10th study session that the consulting team is the very same one that we used in 2013 and that at that time was selected again by staff um, and I'll, I'll uh, come back to discuss a little bit about how we typically select and bring forward consultants to the city council. Um, the consulting team was selected by staff for their expertise and frankly for their phenomenal success in serving the city's interests with the bond refinancing in 2013. Um, that refinancing saved ratepayers of the utility system, in this case the wastewater enterprise, approximately $80,000 annually by taking advantage of, of uh, lowered interest rates over the remaining life of the, of the debt that was originally issued in 2002. Um, regarding this, the normal process for selecting consultants, the process that we use involves a city staff review of experts in the field of whatever it is that we're seeking expertise in, um, review of credentials, uh, analysis of the needs of the city, and ultimately presentation to the city council. Uh, as you saw in Mr. Fabian's report this evening, the, one of the actions that we are being asked to take tonight is the approval of the financing team. I've already explained uh, why I believe and I'm recommending that this is the right team. The work that they have produced should speak for itself in representing the city council and, this, and the city's overall interests to uh, secure funding in order to make sure that our utility capital improvement program is successfully and timely carried out. Um, the, the financing, uh, I, I want to comment specifically on your, um, your statements regarding the selection of the, of the consultant to conduct the city clerk recruitment. Uh, that actually did occur in a little bit of a different manner than a, any other consultant selection that I can think of, particularly um, in, the, in the recent several years that my memory extends. Um, the city council has determined uh, by previous votes over the several months in uh, earlier in 2017 that it was your intent to uh, appoint the city clerk uh, at the city council level. And so we brought you the, we conducted a solicitation, we brought you the responses to that solicitation and asked for your guidance about the consultant that you specifically would be working with in order to conduct the city clerk recruitment. Um, again, that process differs a little bit from the normal procedure that we use whereby we would solicit proposals, um, evaluate those proposals, and select a consultant that the staff recommends and bring forward that single consultant as a staff recommendation for your endorsement. Still different is the, is the, is the way that financings typically occur. Um, this team is not paid until and unless the bond issuance is approved by the city council and therefore um, their work has been done uh, to this point at risk of your approval and you are being asked tonight to do as you always do, which is to approve the financing team as well as the issuance of the debt in fulfillment of the city council's policy goals and objectives. Were you gonna answer how much oh, the you're answer, making? The answer to the question, I'm sorry. Um, the total amount uh, of, the, uh, of the compensation to the team that is a, uh, is, a, is a cost of the debt issuance and has been factored into essentially the costs of the costs of the delivery of the financing is in aggregate $650,000 or 1.7% of the total cost or the total amount of the financing. 
I, I'm sorry, and that's the that's the consolidated total amount for the two separate bond issuances, cool. one for the water enterprise and one for the wastewater enterprise. Okay, so we can disagree. I can agree to disagree of the notification of the specifics of this debt issuance. We didn't, we had these, we knew we were gonna pay with debt for this program. It's in, it's in the tables. Those tables don't add up to what we're talking about tonight. So I have an issue with that. But we didn't, as a full council, we did not get word of this until two weeks ago. So I'm expressing how I had issues with that or continue to have issues, issues with that. I understand underwriters need to make money. Um, the issue I have with how we're proceeding here is we have one option. One big $64 million payoff over 30 years or nothing. I have a hard time with that. I think, I think we should always be given at least two choices when it comes down to anything because do this or do nothing. And we know we can't do nothing. We have to. We have. We have to pay this debt. We we agreed to that. We understand that. And now I'm going to go into the tables of the, the 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 data that is in need of revision. As discussed with the city manager yesterday, I made it very clear. Table nine A has some assumptions in growth that are very conservative. 20, 25 units, 25 units, 25 apartments, 25 single family homes per year for five years. And in fact, it goes all the way for a total of 10 years. So the, the, the study that we're, we're determining to get this debt is 10 years of only 25 units per year. Right here. So we already know that the Plaza Apartments have 83 units. They're building them right now. First National Bank got an update today. Their preliminary plans show 60 units. Lee Buffet, former Lee, Lee's Buffet, people know that place, 23 units. Skyline College, 70 units. Mills Park, 329 units. Okay, so the table that what we received from the, from the consultant who told us how much to raise the rates or how much debt we needed to get doesn't have these numbers in the analysis. So instead of 125 over the next five years, we're looking at 574. Now that's very significant because we just raised the capacity charges for water and sewer from around $5,000 to $12,000 per unit. So if we add those units that are coming on board in the next probably three years, four years, we're looking between $3.1 to $6.3 million in additional revenue, one-time revenue into the water, into the sewer. So these tables aren't accurate. They're a little, um, way too conservative. These tables also do not, um, I already said that the, the numbers don't add up when I when I looked at adding what the debt proceeds for water and sewer they, they don't add, add up to what we're issuing um, so yes last night I asked for the consultant to revise these tables because we need to know what we're, what we really need I'm also concerned about 
the construction schedule of the projects that are in design or in construction. Um, I'm looking more like, well, maybe we might have to delay those that we can in the water and we pay as we go. Because when it comes down to it, we're all going to be paying for it. This interest is 20 something million. Is that what it is? I'm sorry. Millions of dollars in interest. So I think we need to re examine all of this instead of rushing forward. Our financial problems with our water and, and sewer have taken many, many years to develop. And rushing to decide in two weeks with data that's not correct. And we're forgetting another thing. We have a new election. We have an election coming up in a couple of weeks. We're going to dump this whole amount of debt on the new council. And waiting a little bit longer is, is not going to cost that much money. So I'll just tell you right now, I'm voting no on this. And I'm, 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 I'm we, could, we could wait a little longer. Wait a little longer, pay many millions of dollars more. You won't pay less. The data's not, the data's not accurate, Jim. It's not accurate. I, I would like to hear a response. Any comment from the consultants at all regarding what Marty said? Sure, well, I, I can give a couple of comments. In the, in the, Um, Mr. O'Leary would like to see the Table 9A, uh, the documents that we have, is, are, we're not readily finding it. Um, so I'll comment about uh, a couple of the other... 5%, 5%, 5, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. The, um, again, with um, due respect to the council members' interest to use uh, pay-as-you-go financing, uh, that was discussed as an option both during the analysis of the rates uh, back in February, March, and May, um, where the City Council, I believe, was informed and understood that absent the debt financing that pay-as-you-go would likely, uh, would not likely, would absolutely impact the city's ability to deliver projects in a timely manner consistent with, and I'll just say what staff has consistently understood, the city council's urgency and highest priority imperative to move forward with our capital improvement program so that we can make sure that our water and wastewater utility systems are rehabilitated and that we are no longer subject to the frequent breaks and repairs, um, uh, uh, regulatory agency actions and lawsuits that we have previously experienced uh, as a result of our previous deferred maintenance program. So um, it, it has been staff's clear understanding and we would certainly appreciate if the City Council uh, believes that that urgency, uh, we would appreciate knowing if it's the City Council's interest to, to reverse that previous direction. Um, pay as you go simply will not allow the delivery schedule that our, uh, that the City Council has previously directed and that we're prepared to deliver. Um, you're correct, it took us many years to get here, and I believe that's where the City Council's urgency based on your previous many uh, discussions have indicated uh, you don't want us spending that many years to correct the situation and to make sure that our utility system is stable and reliable. Um, regarding the numbers in the report, I'm going to let, uh, I think I'm going to let Mr. O'Leary respond to the 25 units per year, but I want to respond first to the topic that we discussed last night, which is in the water enterprise, the table that you were able to add up a total of $19 million, 19 point something million dollars, and your question about why we were issuing 
12 million dollars in debt as opposed to the 19 million dollars that was shown in the uh, uh, consultant's rate analysis report. First of all, uh, the rate analysis report is, was, is done uh, with a certain intent in mind, and that is to identify rate requirements and options, a rate amount, uh, a rate increase amount, options for the city council's consideration. That information is then the base for the financing team's evaluation of uh, the information with a different perspective related to financing. What is the best amount, uh, timing, and uh, structure for a debt issuance in order to meet the council's objectives? The uh, difference between the 12 million that we're proposing be financed tonight in the water enterprise and the 19 million that you added up comes from a table that showed a 10 year rate horizon beginning in 16, 17 through I guess 26, 27. Um, again, as Mr. Fabian indicated earlier, we're, we are talking about the five year current rate planning period um, and the adopted, uh, the, the, the current five-year rate period. Um, and if you add those numbers up, they do indeed come to the $12 million that we're talking about tonight. So as Mr. Fabian indicated, there is, uh, the rate study anticipates an additional issuance of debt in, a, in and around the 2023 time period, um, and that would be the difference based on the current rate analysis. And again, I would remind you that uh, based on our current practice of a multi-year rate program, we will next be doing another comprehensive rate analysis in 2021-22 and the city council will have the opportunity at that time to consider rates, to consider uh, whether you want to uh, prepare for another debt issuance or not uh, with, with uh, new information about the current status of projects and costs associated with the projects. So I believe Jim can respond to the 25 units per year issue. Uh, the, thank you for, for sharing the table. I'm, I, for some reason, not, not finding it here, but the table that you referred to uh, comes out of the water and uh, sewer rate study um, that, again, was uh, undertaken by Bartle Wells, uh, really beginning in very early uh, 2017. And um, in considering the rate adjustment, um, there was um, a factor that uh, could be included, and I think there was actually quite a bit of discussion at the subcommittee level um, because the consultant indicated that some city councils, uh, especially in um, relatively no growth areas, show no growth when they're calculating. And um, uh, it was the recommendation that uh, not factoring or not trying to determine uh, exactly what a future development would be and when it would be and when it would come online that the recommendation was to show a 25 uh, meter increase over each of the 10 years. Uh, this was reviewed with the subcommittee in great detail and um, uh, this was the direction that the subcommittee gave was to um, include the 25 increase year to year. So I think a statement that uh, that table is incorrect uh, is a misreading of the table. I, I think it is precisely uh, your direction uh, to include it in that direction, in, in, in that manner. Um, can I, can I, can we have a discussion here then on that? If you don't mind, excuse my interruption. Um, this is a model. This was a, this, this, it was good data at the time. A model just kind of get get an idea of where things are, where things are going to be in the future. Before you take on this debt, I think you go back and you make sure your data is in kind of makes more sense. So as a model, it was, it was fine to say 25 percent. 25 is is 
it's a conservative number. But when it comes down to what's really needed, I think it's, it's, it would be important to look at what's coming in instead of, we don't need that big of a debt because we're, we have at least three million coming in of capacity charges, not including the, the water service fees and the water consumption fees or consumption that's going to be generating revenue from these additional units. So you're correct. We did look at this. It was a model. It was a conservative model. But as we go into issuing debt, you want to re-examine it before you say yes. And that's what I'm asking for. We're not doing that here. <laughs> Isn't it close to $3 million with, with with, with these additional units of, a, of capacity fees that are going to be coming in in water and sewer? 474 units. Let's do the, we, yes, no? Through the chair. Irene. Um, oh, well. May, may I thank you. Since I was the other half of this Irene was subcommittee. Irene on the subcommittee also. Um, issuing debt is very scary. It's like looking at your house and you're going to take out a mortgage and you are looking at how much you have to put down and how much your salary is going to be. And I know all of us at some time or another have experienced that heart-wrenching thing where you're going to sign the paper because some months you only have $36.54, and I, that's a real number, left in the checkbook after you pay your mortgage. But part of your expectations and part of the bank's expectations is you will earn more money and it won't be so hard the next time and the next time. Okay. So I, that just kind of gets you in the frame of how all this <coughs> is. We did discuss the 25. To, to, it's always better to think that you're going to make less than you are and then when you get more, it's fabulous. You put that toward other projects. You look in the future and say, okay, since we had this extra money that we did not um, spell out, then we put that and don't do the, the debt service in 2023. Or we accelerate how um, the projects we're going to do. Or to say we are for sure going to get three million dollars is on the other side. You, we may not get all those units. Um, developers may pull out. The economy may go down. All those things might happen. It's just as, as chancy to, it's more chancy to say for sure they will all be built than it is to say conservatively we will for sure have 25 every year for the next five years. So that's where the that's what I heard when I went to all those meetings. I'm sure that's my understanding of what staff heard. And in general, that's how this city operates when we do our budgeting. We, we budget higher than we think, and that, than we think we're going to earn. I'm sorry, is that how we're doing it? Ba or backwards? <laughs> so we think we're going to earn less than we hope we will, and then we have a, a cushion. So that's what this is about. It, if we get more money than we expect, fabulous. We'll put it toward our, our other projects. We have an endless supply of projects. And in 20 years, the system that we did 20 years ago is going to be 40 years old, and we'll have more projects. It's an unending stream of projects that we're going to be doing. It's just like your car and your house. You, know, you, you paint the house, you put a new roof on, you fix the plumbing, and guess what? In ten, five years, you need a new fence, and you, on and on and on. So the, the city is a, in the same type of situation. So I understand Marty's concerns. I don't quite agree with him about the surprise about the debt service. Um, I, I don't understand why he, the, the, there is no urgency about it as far as how this all lays out. We get criticized. We started this in March. We get criticized for going too fast, and now we're getting criticized for going too slow. So I, I don't see any 
fault on any of the staff parts. Um, I think what they did was work hard and give us the best information they possibly could. They went with a financial team that is proven to have saved us money, all of us money in our rates in the past and we'll be doing so in the future. So I'll stop there and Thank you. give the, it to the mayor. Mr. Mayor, if, if, if I could just add a, sure. a, a, a comment. I think it's important for the council um, not to confuse uh, two separate issues. The 5% the five percent growth that, um, you know, could be characterized as uh, a, an error that needs correction. Uh, again, as I pointed out, this was the direction of the subcommittee after a lot of discussion that this was a fair representation of the growth. And it is true that it is based on a model, but that model resulted in a rate study that the council has approved. So it is not just a theoretical rates, uh, theoretical formula, it is a rate study and um, that has resulted in certain rates and uh, I among others um, are going to be uh, representing to Standard & Poor's on Friday the veracity of that rate study and I think it's important uh, that um, it not be implied that there is a substantial or incorrect error in it, uh, I would say that um, from my belief that it is uh, entirely uh, an accurate formula that the committee and the, and the council approved. Um, I think um, the discussion of the, of the rate study and then there's a separate discussion of capacity charges and um, There's um, a, 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 an amount, and and I, I think the the city council, at the direction with the help of the subcommittee, uh, did a lot of work on the capacity charge issue and a recognition that uh, there had been no increase or adjustments since, since 2001 that we were really behind. Um, I and so we moved the capacity charge on future development from dead last among our comparators to the mid-range. So I think, uh, I mean, full credit to the council and I mean, I think that's a substantial movement. I, I think to characterize that at any given year or at any given time, we are gonna generate $3 million in revenue is simply not a true statement that, that we, and I think as one of your colleagues um, said as recently as the last meeting, uh, hope is not a plan, um, that we might hope that we get this money, but it is certainly not a plan. And when we go to um, S&P next week, S&P <clears throat> does not consider capacity charges as revenue that they are going to be considering in, in, cover, in debt coverage um, so they are looking at, at, at our ongoing uh, rates. Uh, so um, I think it's, it's, it's important not to uh, mix those two. Um, I think the, just the last characterization that I would like to um, uh, hopefully clarify a, a, a little bit is again the characterization that the numbers as it relates to debt financing um, are um, incorrect. And I think if, if one reads um, the documents with some care, uh, you'll see that that's really not the case. And I would point out that there is one change, uh, if again, if you, it, it, and correction that we have uh, included in, in the rate analysis and the, and the, and the um, uh, bonding analysis, uh, the rate study as it was um, approved and the way it was um, projected, uh, there was a little over $1 million um, in projects related to the South San Francisco San, San Bruno treatment plant. And we have gotten updated information and the 1718 expenditure uh, for San Francisco uh, rather than being about 1.1 million is actually going to be 5.2 million dollars. 
and it is on that basis that we have increased uh, the amount of the uh, debt issuance to cover that specific additional uh, increase in the, in the uh, treatment plant. Other than that, uh, within a, a small margin of change, uh, in fact, the amount of the debt does come out of the rate study and does come out of the uh, capital improvement budget. So it is, I mean, again, to um, state that there's an error and uh, that it, it does not add up is simply misreading uh, that particular, uh, those particular documents. And um, thank with, you. With all due respect, Jim, if it's been changed, it wasn't accurate. The tables South are San now Francisco has advised us okay, that well, the 1718 expenditure is $5.2 million rather than what we knew at the beginning of the year of 1.1. That is correct. Right. So it's fine. I, I, I sense how this is going, and, and I'm just hoping that you see that I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it was very conservative modeling early on. And at that point, we, I was, I guess, um, thinking, unfortunately, at that point, like, well, whenever it came to that de debt, is debt issuance, we would be able to talk about it instead of have, and we did, but we only have two weeks to figure it out. So I, for the modeling, it was fine, conservative, but now we have additional information that changes how our revenue streams are going to be. So that's where I'll leave it at, and, and we can agree on that part, possibly. Rico? Thank you. Do, do Chair, um, and I want to hear from the public, but I won't give myself credit for the hope is not a plan. That was Joe Long who gave me those words as a younger man. On capacity charges, one thing I will say is I believe in being more conservative. I, I do not believe if we had budgeted for the TOT tax of the hotel near Jack's, we would have been budgeting for things we could, we would not have come to fruition. And we would not have actually be here. The 326 units that are proposed or discussion, that, that discussion has been happening before I even got on the council about something happening. So I don't know that we can, I would feel uncomfortable saying it's in the bank, that that should be knowing that we're going to get those because we have seen projects, uh, the one that's going on near San Bruno Cable, that we had a developer and the developer died. Then the economy went bad. Then that didn't happen, and now it is happening. So when it comes to balancing budgets and people's money, we have an obligation. And so I am more on the conservative side, because if you do find that you have monies from capacity charges that uh, the subcommittee brought forward and uh, the council's approved, then there's nothing in my mind that says you don't have to do the issuance in 223, and there is nothing that says, can we look at the rates? Could they go down to 4%? There's nothing to say they can't go down. There is something that says they should not and cannot go up without going back out to 218. They are locked in for right now for five years, because I know a concern of mine would be there was somewhere about, well, it may not affect. Well, I, I, I want more assurance that it's, it is what it is. The majority of the council approved uh, the years at the percent, and that's what it is, locked in, and they can go down, but they cannot go up without going back out and going through the entire 218 process. Is that correct? Okay. So on, on being conservative, I think that was wise to analyze that, but I, I don't know that we should assume that we're going to get it. Uh, and to me, dealing, if it was my bank account, I'll, I'll gamble. But I have a hard time doing that to the community to assume we're going to get it and until we got it in the bank or it's in the pipeline. I don't want to. I don't want to count for that. Right. I have the same type of comments. Uh, I was very satisfied with the presentation a couple of weeks ago. I thought it was a good deal for the city. We're saving some money, and uh, we did it at the at the uh, with the help of the people that saved us a lot of money before. So you have a snapshot in time. Uh, you know, budgeting 25 units. You're talking about 300 something units in El Camino Real. You're not going to see those for years, years. So that money's not going to be there for years. 
But if you do, for some reason we have uh, another 400 and some on units coming on, on board real quick, there's nothing to say we can't look at rates. We confirm that. You can always, you can always reduce them. So you know, I'd rather be conservative also. I think it's a good deal for the city. I really want the city to take advantage of its interest rate uh, climate right now. And we're going to save an awful lot of money overall because of this. And the projects we're going to do, you saw them on the board tonight. I mean, there's a, there's a slew of projects that have to be done to get us in some kind of shape here for our infrastructure. It's, it's huge. And so I, I support this. Ken? Four more meetings to go, and this is one of the most important ones I think that uh, I'll be a part of. Uh, and of all those 20 years that I've been sitting here and making decisions, I don't even have a real speck of you know, expertise that this <laughs> finance team has. And, I'm, I'm, and Jim O'Leary has provided great information, great forecasting, great budgeting for the city uh, for, for many years, and has proven it. We sit in a study session, you get presented with this stuff that is, at least for me, a few feet over my head. And I ask the question, why these guys? Why these guys? You know, why, why are we, you know, why did not, why didn't we select, you know, the finance team? The answer was, the, an, the question, the question was answered. This is the team that saved us and we've worked well with them and you know, they have a proven track record. The only question I didn't ask at the study session is, enlighten me on why we haven't gotten into debt previously. Why haven't we made this more of a practice, you know, so that we can put that pile of money, you know, in one, in one month's time and start, you know, that's real shovel ready. When you've got a project ready and you've got the cash ready, you can go out and start paying people to do the work. We're collecting rates with no guarantee that we're going to get these projects done. And as time goes by, we all know that the prices go up. This is, to me, and not again, not being a financer, not being really good at even balancing my own checkbook, this is a no-brainer. The time is right. The rates are starting to inch up, so that you know you you can't afford to even lose twenty thousand dollars a month, you know, in in a you know in a rate increase. So I'm convinced with this. This is what this council, the majority of this council, has been doing for the last twenty years to benefit the city for the next hundred years. I'm voting yes. Okay. Uh, anything else? I, I do want to hear from the, the public. Anybody from the public? Please, I didn't mean it that way. Just tell us your name and your street, please. Russ Steins, Reed Avenue. Um, a couple things. One is I've been to a few council meetings, and uh, I think over the last 10 or 15 years, we've I've watched us raise rates and raise rates and raise rates, always saying that we were going to rebuild our infrastructure, we we're going to get this fixed so kids didn't have to live in sewage on the wet, on the east side. And, you know, basically, I know we've done some projects. I know we need to um, do many more projects. But my question really is, is, you know, at least three of you have been on that council since 2001 or so for the last 17 or, or 20 years. And why are we here? And why all of a sudden when you're all leaving, are you going to take us and put us $40 million in debt when you don't even want to hire a city clerk because you want to let the new council work with them, but yet you want to make the decision for everybody else to be put in $40 million in debt instead of allowing the new council to work this out with some different lenders? And the next question I got is, how many, I know we've worked with these lenders supposedly and they're great guys, how many lenders did you guys go after? How many guys, how many people did you say, we want to borrow? 40 million bucks. What kind of rate can you give us? What can you do for us? How much is it going to be? That's what I want to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sandra Perez Vargas. I want to echo that. I'm not comfortable with people heading out the door making decisions for our future. You're going to be gone, Mayor. Kenneth's going to be gone. You announced tonight you're going to be gone. How easy is it for you on the way out? I would love to see, say, Marco, 
Michael Salazar or Laura and Rico Asme are making those decisions for the rest of us. You're out the door. Just a reminder, we up here pay the same rates that you do. I understand right, that. Right, right. Okay. I understand that. That's why it shocked me when you said the couple of businesses in the restaurant. Ryan Marsney, Keynes Avenue. According to actuary tables, I more than likely will still be alive in 30 years and paying off the debt that you are accruing for us tonight. Several of you, according to actuary tables, will not be alive in 30 years. And yet you're going to saddle us with this. It can't wait a few more months, but we have to trust the wonderful management team that only has cable $9 million in debt and has tables that really don't seem to add up. No problem, we can just trust you. No thank you, that's why we have elections. We're having elections in a few weeks. Please let the new council decide. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any action by the council? Through the chair. Rico? Uh, there were a couple questions asked. So did we, did staff go out to di look at different finance teams? <coughs> or was there some, something done other than just say it's right there? Th that was one of the questions. Did, so we did not look for a new finance team with this financing. Second question was, what is the detriment to having um, wait, which the new council isn't sworn in until the 12th, and they may not be able to meet until later that month or in the 218 for official actions? What what re what repercussion could that have? So at this point, um, we're approximately two and a half months until the first business meeting of the new city council. Um, during that time period, uh, as the news uh, is reporting, there is a moderate to high probability, uh, and again, no, none of us can um, with precise accuracy predict, uh, but there is a high probability that the you know, interest rates will increase over that period of time, and I would say that that is probably the biggest risk that is associated with with waiting that period of time at this point. And construction costs. What well, well c thank you. Construction costs are, are always increasing, and while we will continue to deliver projects based on our existing schedule uh, with the resources that are available to us, um, that's a, a significant concern as well. Um, and the last important issue is that, as the city council is aware, there is a deadline associated with our consent decree um, based on our settlement agreement with the Baykeepers and the enforcement action by the regional board associated with the wastewater enterprise. Um, that those, those deadlines are coming up quickly and delay in those projects uh, you, you saw the list of them tonight with the number of starred projects in the wastewater enterprise that are subject to the consent decree. Um, delay in delivering those projects will most likely subject the city to the potential of additional enforcement action and um, litigation by the baykeepers. And if the city took no debt into the pay as you go, what would be the repercussions? to the city, which is one, not meeting the uh, requirements. Obviously. There's the possibility of not meeting the requirements money. under the consent decree. There's the, um, the possibility of our financing becoming more expensive or, or being, um, you know, becoming uh, not cost effective. Um, I mean, again, the, the comments that I've made previously. When the city went in to do its first debt uh, back in 02, 03, for my time, but the reason they decided to do that then was, it, if you recall, or somebody. The, well, I mean, the very first financing the city did was for the police facility in 2000, but the first wastewater was in 2002. And again, uh, like uh, this particular time, and I think there were $9 million 
my recollection, it was about $9 million in projects that the city council determined were um, of great importance to move forward. There were a number of projects um, up in various locations. As I believe there were a total of six projects and um, there was immediacy, there was a, a strong uh, uh, recommendation from the council to move forward as quickly as those projects. And again, the methodology of doing that um, is to issue debt. I, I would respond a little further to, to just uh, a question. Um, uh, and, and this just goes back to the, the benefit, uh, perceived benefits, if there are any, of pay as you go. Um, and obviously, the, um, you know, one of the benefits might be financing costs, uh, as you would avoid with your mortgage if you paid cash for a house. Um, and put off living in it for uh, 20 years until you, you know, sa sa saved up that, 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 that amount of money. But um, I did want to go back to, to the rate study because uh, the subcommittee understood, I believe, and um, in the time I've been associated with city over 20 years, uh, it has been the direction of the council uh, that the rates uh, that are approved every three or five years or annually are to number one, uh, be as low as possible uh, for the benefit of the, of the residents and to, um, and, and in addition to that, uh, there is an interest in over a long term smoothing increases as much as possible and not having um, spikes and, and great variations in, um, in rates. Um, I, I did a, I, I explored uh, if the council um, decided to undertake the capital project program that the city council has approved and to do it purely on a pay-as-you-go basis. Uh, on the water side in order, in fact, to do these projects, in 1718, it would have taken a 35% rate increase. On the, on the water side, if you were going to do the projects that the council is, is approved, it would take a 20% increase in 1718, an additional 10% next year in 1819. The, the council direction has always been to smooth the rate increases as much as possible and consistently the means to address that is through debt financing. And that debt financing, uh, I mean again back to a question um, uh, by council member Rico Medina about well why, uh, why haven't we, we done um, projects, why haven't we financed years ago? Um, well, I, I think the reality is that you only, you only finance when you need to. I mean, I think, I think it's safe to say that the schedules for projects has changed year to year in recent years that has not caused an immediate need to do it because of in part because of the consent decree, we have an absolute deadline. It cannot be put off, and these projects are going to get done. This money is going to get spent, and the option to doing the rates as the council approved were the, the rate adjustments that I described without debt. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could add one sure. more quick comment, and uh, this is a response to a question that actually hasn't been asked yet in, in the forum here this evening, but was asked uh, previously, and that was, could staff provide a short narrative about each of the projects that is proposed to be funded by the uh, debt financing? And I just wanted to let you know that our staff has prepared that information, spent the time to develop a short paragraph on each of those projects, 
that we will distribute to the city council, to any other interested member of the community, and that we will post on our website so that that information is available for anybody who's interested. Thank you, and I, I did have that on my notes, Avenues 1-1, that was on the slide presentation. Um, we have the staff reports and what have you, but that would be um, something that would be appreciated. So when we had that, uh, the debt that we just spoke about, we went out, where were any negatives? When we look back on it and it got paid off, you're, you're right, and we refinanced and saved $80,000, what were the negatives when we look back in time? Because obviously that's when you can really tell whether it, whether it worked or it didn't. And maybe we're over the positives, to be fair. So I'm not a half-empty glass over here. I'm not sure I can be objective. I guess I was part of, uh, uh, you know, uh, undertaking, you know, the council's direction. Um, I honestly can, I mean, I, negatives, I, I'm not sure that there were any negatives. Um, I believe, and you know, I'm not a public works person, so I'm not sure I can best describe. But, it, but, but, but again, there were six projects, adding up to about nine million dollars, that were priority projects for the council. And I, as I recall, some of them had to do with flooding in some some neighborhoods and area, and and those nine million dollars of projects were done and completed, and the system was improved. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, the interest rate, as I recall, was probably double what we're talking about today. So I don't know if that's a negative, but that was the time in which it was done. Uh, I think it was a very good rate uh, in that environment. But um, I, I honestly can't think of any, of any uh, negatives to, 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 to share. That's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of uh, staff? Marty? <clears throat> I want to clarify, um, pay as you go, what I'm, what I'm thinking that if we didn't issue as much debt that get us through the first couple years, through 18 and 19, water and sewer, water 11.1, .1, sewer 12.2, that would get us through the consent decree and allow other options to be reviewed. We're going to be have a better. We'll be down the road more to see how the development's coming. That money will be in the bank if it winds up being so. So, what? Why couldn't we do 20 million and let the council, the next council, decide? It's. it's I'll leave it at that. Why can't we just take care of the first three years of what's planned? What's in the tables? I, I keep on going to the tables because that's the last data that I am able to use. Adding up the, the next three years is 23.3 million in water and sewer and, and debt proceeds that we needed in the rate study. So why can't we do that? So you can do that. The your staff and the financing team is not recommending that you do that for a variety of reasons. Um, the first is that based on our analysis, this is the most cost-effective way to utilize debt to assure the delivery of projects over the five-year rate, the rate, um, the, the approved rate program period of time. Um, as, as I'm sure you aware, are aware, the rate study itself anticipated multiple uh, issuance of debt, I believe three or four times in the five-year period. You incur issuance costs in each at each st each time you issue debt. We talked about those costs earlier. They're not. Um, uh, if you can do it once instead of four times, you, you save money. Um, it this debt issuance was evaluated and determined to be the most um, um, timely and appropriate to meet the schedule of the projects. In other words. The work is needed in the early years of the rate program, and as Mr. O'Leary indicated, that's the reason that he was able to calculate the 35% rate increase that would be required if you used uh, pay-as-you-go, or of course you can delay the delivery of the projects. So um, there are options. Um, you, you, 
your, your decision tonight could be to send the financing team back to the drawing board. Um, staff is not recommending that for, for the reasons that we've outlined, um, not to mention what we previously discussed in terms of the, um, the time value of money, um, in this case, the opportunity to take advantage of historically low interest rates. Okay, one last question. All right. What would be the other alternative? Instead of the 60 or 40, 40 million, 30 year, you must have came up with some other option that you eventually said, ah, we're not gonna do that, we're gonna go for this. What was that? Well, I think, I, I guess I would say we, just as, just as you're describing, there are options, um, we looked at a variety of options. I mean, I mean, we could issue debt every year. I mean, we we could only do one year's worth of financing. We, uh, so, we, so that is. Let that, me re, let me rephrase the that's question. That's an option. What's what was the second best option? Not I, all the options. I think What's the I think best the option? the second best option is the option we presented to you. Do nothing or do this. What's the That's other option? All, I mean, I mean, again, we can do it. We, we could do two years. I mean, we, there, there are, there are, we could break it up into any, any increment that the council, um, you know, would direct us, but, but there's, I mean, this is, can, can I just interrupt? I mean, sure. for, for the simple, for the layperson, this was at the study session. You came up with a figure of $27 million. You showed the amount of projects that will be done, that will be started and completed within the next three years that equal that debt amount. To get less spent, you're gonna do less. To get more, you know, would be too much. We had to be realistic. We turned to, you know, to public works director, will you do these projects in three years? And he said, yes. I mean, what other option is there to do less work with the rates that we're collecting, meaning dragging them out more? I mean, this is the, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I mean, again, I'm trying to make this as simple for the public as possible. This is about using the rate structure that we have adopted to the, to the optimum and the most effective use for the money at a time where money is at its cheapest. And yet you can speculate all you want that you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or, or a month from now. Trend is it's going up. My money is on it's going up and why wait? If I may, just to speculate. <clears throat> The only other option is to do less work, which is not an option at all. We have an opportunity here to fund a lot of projects. Just look at that list and we can get it done and we can get it done in an economic way. It's, it's the right thing to do, so. And, and the other problem aside from it, it did, did take care of the $9 million projects before, we're under a decree, we're under a timeline. That's the problem. And yes, we can minimize it, we can, go out for a few years or five years, but but in the end, the rate is good. Um, it doesn't mean we can't lower things, but also we have to meet deadlines, obligations, and legal requirements. And I know what the repercussion is, because I've had to sit through those getting on to the council, um, and those are things we don't want to go back to. And it's going to make it worse for the rate payer, because it already has. Do you have something briefly, Mr. I do, I do. Um, just real quickly, um, you know, for 17 years, we didn't raise hooking up for new people coming to this town for water and sewer. And we might find ourselves in a much better place than we are today. Um, so I guess what I guess what I'm trying to say is for us to wait until the new city council comes in 
and allow them to look at different options and a few different other financing options and a few different other lenders is not the end of the world. Um, so I ask you guys, you know, from my perspective, you guys are going to be, Jim, you know, all, all kindness to you. Uh, you in, a, in a month or so from now, you're going to be sitting here at home watching this, and you're going to sit there and you say, okay, our water and sewer rates have went up 10 times, 12 times in the last 15 years, and what are we doing? We need to, re we need to do these projects. What's the best rate we can get for the people here because I don't want my children to be in debt and I don't want to have to pay for this 30 years down the line without getting the absolute best deal possible and making sure that we cover every base and not rushing into a $40 million loan that we're going to pay $22 million on because you don't want to take the time out because you want to pass it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion or action by the council? Mr. Mayor, if I uh, may suggest a structure for dealing, you have four right. resolutions, right. Uh, two for the City Council, Water and Wastewater, and then two for the Public Financing Authority, also Water and Wastewater. So if someone is introducing the resolutions, you can do the two City Council ones first. Vicki can call the roll on, on both the City Council, and then you can do the Public Financing Authority, two resolutions, and she can call the roll on that. Okay, very good. Someone would like to introduce the resolutions based on the City Council. I'll introduce the resolution for the City Council on Resolution 1, the issuance, I guess. Water so, revenue so probably it's just easiest to refer to it as the City Council Water Resolution and then the City Council Wastewater Resolution, and we'll know which one you mean. One at a time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll introduce the resolution, City Council Water Resolution. Water Vice issue. Mayor Ibarra? Aye. Councilmember Marty Medina? No. Councilmember Rico Medina? Aye. Councilmember O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Ruwing? Aye. I'll introduce the resolution for City Council issuance of wastewater bonds. Vice Mayor Ibarra? Aye. Councilmember Marty Medina? No. Councilmember Rico Medina? Aye. Councilmember O'Connell? Aye. Mayor Ruwing? Aye. So now we'll switch to the Public Financing Authority and we need a director to introduce uh, the water resolution. All right, let's do it again. Uh, I will introduce a resolution for San Bruno Public Financing Authority authorizing issuance of the bonds, water water revenue bonds. Director Ibarra? Aye. Director Marty Medina? No. Director Rico Medina? Aye. Director O'Connell? Aye. Director Ruane? Aye. Finally, introduce a resolution San Bruno Public Financing Authority issuance of wastewater revenue bonds. Director Ibarra? Aye. Director Marty Medina? No. Director Rico Medina? Aye. Director O'Connell? Aye. Director Ruane? Aye. Item 10C is adopt a resolution repealing the existing parking restriction on the east side of the 700 block of Hensley Avenue and establishing a new parking restriction on the east side of the 700 block of Hensley Avenue between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on the first and third Monday of every month for street sweeping. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Earlier this year, staff received a request from the resident that lived along the 700 block of Hensley Avenue who inquired whether the parking restrictions on the east side of the block can be removed um, to create more parking spaces. Given that there is a shortage of parking spaces, uh, the resident was interested in creating additional parking spaces for the neighborhood. The 700 block of Hensley Avenue is located between San Bruno and Keynes Avenue and parallels El Camino Real. On the east side of the block are single family homes. On the west side are mostly commercial, which consist of Shell gas station, Melody Toyota and, Toyota and Midas Auto Repair. Currently parking is uh, restricted along the east side of the road from 7 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. at night, except for Sundays and holidays. The west side allows public parking except for the hours between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for street sweeping um, on the first and third uh, Tuesdays of each uh, month. Staff evaluated the resident's request and brought the item to TSPC last month for discussion. The ev evaluation consists of, of uh, assessing the roadway width and determining whether or why uh, parking restrictions uh, existed only along the east side of the block. Uh, staff determined that the roadway width is 28 feet, very uh, similar to the other nearby residential streets in the neighborhood, and those streets allow parking on both sides. 
and historical records were searched and a review of those available records and agreements uh, with the city and the Melody Toyota and other businesses provided little information regarding parking requirements. Staff also contacted adjacent businesses uh, to determine whether they would oppose the removal of the uh, parking restriction. The Shell gas station and St. Bruno Church did not provide any feedback. Uh, Melody Toyota and Midas were in favor of removing the parking restrictions. At the TSPC meeting, staff presented the re removal of the parking restriction and, uh, and let them know that they will create 20 additional parking spaces. Residents spoke in favor of removing the uh, restrictions and not one resident op uh, opposed. Uh, TSPC voted uh, four to zero to accept the staff recommendations of removing the parking restrictions. And the only time the parking will be restricted, uh, it's between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the first and third Monday of each month for street sweeping. Uh, as for the fiscal impact, the cost of uh, removing and replacing the signs is approximately about you know, $500, and there's sufficient funding and operating budget to install these signs. So that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anything for uh, Jimmy, staff, or action? Introduce. I'd like to introduce the, uh, hold on a second. Resolution. Resolution. Council Member Marty Medina. Aye. Council Member Rico Medina. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Vice Mayor Ibarra. Aye. Mayor Ruing. Aye. Item 10D, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of agreement with the city of Daly City and the California Water Service Company for preparation of a groundwater sustainability plan for the Southwest Side Groundwater Basin. Thanks. Um, good evening again. Uh, underneath the city of San Bruno is an aquifer known as the Southwest Side Basin that provides the city with a valuable source of water supply. The city has historically provided uh, approximately 50% of the water for supply from the basin, and the remaining balance is supplies purchased uh, from the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Therefore, the protection and management of the groundwater basin is important since the city relies on it as a source of potable supply for our community. Our city has been a leader in groundwater management in the Southwest Side Basin. Some of the accomplishments to date include installation of monitoring wells to aid in the detection of potential seawater intrusion from the San Francisco Bay, uh, development of the groundwater management plan, uh, development of the shallow groundwater study, and the current development of the groundwater sustainability agency and the groundwater sustainability plan. The requirement for the formation of the groundwater sustainability agency and uh, and the plan is part of the Groundwater Sustainability Act uh, signed by the California Governor Jerry Brown in September of 2014. And the guidelines for the plan requirements and uh, groundwater basins priorities were completed by the California Department of Water Resources. The basins were prioritized, uh, very low, low, medium, and high, uh, using data for population, uh, population growth, uh, public supply wells, groundwater use, uh, irrigated acres, and uh, total wells. Uh, the high priority and medium priority basins are required to prepare their plans immediately and, and send it over to their um, Department of Water Resources. And low and very low priority basins are not required to complete the plan. The entire West Side Basin is considered to be a low priority basin and is not required to complete the plan at this time. However, both the north, uh, which is being prepared by the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, and the south, which we're located in, are proceeding as uh, voluntary efforts. Uh, and it eventually, an eventual uh, requirement from DWR uh, that all basins uh, have to have the plans in place. And the advantage of having a sustainability plan uh, would, would empower local agencies to utilize a number of new management tools to achieve their uh, goals, such as requiring registration of groundwater wells, mandating annual extraction reports from individual wells, and imposing limits on extractions. The plan will also include more stringent monitoring of groundwater elevations, water quality, and help guide water supply decisions in particular on the volume of uh, water that should be pumped. Uh, the purpose of tonight's action is to recommend the execution of the MOA with Daly City and Cal Water. Uh, this agreement requires that our city, Daly City, and Cal Water prepare a single groundwater sustainability plan for the Southwest Side Basin. And the agreement also defines the roles and responsibilities of the partner agencies and include all three agencies to provide a staff member to develop the core team uh, that will be responsible for coordinating and carrying out the activities to complete the pre preparation of the plan. SFPC is completing their own plan for the north part of the basin, and the two plans are anticipated to be merged together after it's completed. There are no fiscal impact associated with this execution of the MOA, and uh, previously the parties agreed um, to a three-way cost sharing of about uh, $39,000 each, which is, has already been um, signed. So this concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Through the chair. Um, question that actually 
was raised by the city manager when we were speaking last evening, which was, uh, is this agreement necessary since work is already, you know, the project is underway and work has begun, so is, this, is there a need for this actually to be signed or are we all just good with each other? Um, we're good with each other, but I think it's better that we sign this agreement as well. Uh, but, but I heard from staff that there is a little bit of a delay on this project because of staff ability to work on this. So there's, we need to have this agreement signed so that the people, staff are committed to completing this plan from other agencies as well. City manager? So I'm looking at the director's notes and the uh, staff apparently indicated also that the um, previous agreement is for the cost sharing to finance the, the, the plan. It's not a, um, it's not an agreement that situates the responsibilities of the partner agencies and provides the benefits that the director has just um, illuminated in terms of not only defining the roles and the responsibilities, but making sure that we're coordinated with the SFPUC and eventually um, providing the template for responsible management of the groundwater basin that we share with others. Okay, so it is necessary and needed and would make you happy. Correct. Yes. Okay, both of you. Okay, good. So, uh, I'll go ahead if it's all right, and, you know, my colleagues introduce the resolution. Great. Council Member Rico Medina. Aye. Council Member Marty Medina. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Vice Mayor Ibarra. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. We already did number 11, the annual report of the Culture and Arts Commission. 12 is comments from council members. Uh, Marty, you have a, a, a quick, but, but we, before we get into that, I just want to ask Mark Zapparano to briefly discuss something that I've, I've gotten some comments from the public regarding the marijuana thing that, that we have. Um, what is preventing us from uh, doing a permanent ban on this? And do we have to, if we do, do we have to do it now or can we wait? I mean, maybe you could just give us a little update on that. Because there's uh, some- Sure. Yeah, Very brief briefly, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you've adopted um, a moratorium on all commercial marijuana activities in the city of San Bruno. And that moratorium is in effect uh, until October 25th of 2018. So that uh, law has the same force and effect as any permanent ordinance that you might uh, decide to adopt either now or at a later date. But at this point, nothing prevents you from deciding to adopt a permanent ordinance. And a permanent ordinance would, uh, would not expire unless it were reversed or repealed by the city council. So as you know, adopting the uh, moratorium required four votes adopting or repealing a permanent ordinance requires only three votes. So it's really to, at the pleasure of the council as to whether they would like to direct me to bring forward now a permanent ordinance uh, regarding commercial marijuana activities in the city or to do so at a later date, uh, either after the first of the year or at, at, yeah, after the first of the year at some date after that when we know uh, what the regulations from the state of California are going to be. So it's really the city council's uh, discretion. A permanent ordinance would require two readings, so we need a business meeting to introduce the ordinance and then a meeting to adopt the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I've been asked by the public, a number of members of the public, to, to see if there's any rush to get this done, but we can do it after the state actually sets their, uh, sets their laws, right? You can, that's correct. Okay. All right, very good, thank you. Um, Marty, you have, uh, uh, want us to consider an application to the San Mateo County Transportation Authority to fund establishment of a proposed shuttle service in San Bruno? Right. So I was approached by uh, Jeffrey Tong, a member of our bicycle pedestrian uh, committee, about this upcom upcoming grant that's available uh, due at some time, it doesn't have an exact date, due in December. And uh, Jeffrey knows more, way more than I do. I, I was wondering if it was appropriate for him to. As long as it's brief. As long as it's brief, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Uh, San Bruno Bike and Pedestrian Committee um, passed a bike and pedestrian master plan in 2016, but it really doesn't address the hills. It's rather deficient. Um, I was told by Joel Slavitt that a, a shuttle call for project is going to be beginning December the 15th, but uh, 
Bike and Pedestrian Committee meets every two months, and your committee probably uh, needs to make a decision within the next month, too, because uh, Joel Slavitz says that you need to prepare for this. Once December 15th comes up, you probably have enough time to just fill out the applications. Um, I'd ask you to support this uh, shuttle call for project because um, we need to at least look at opportunities to deal with the traffic congestion and parking uh, issues in downtown. And I proposed um, a route, a quick route. Option one, basically Mar Marty asked me to do three options. Option one is just to go up Sky, uh, San Bruno Avenue to uh, the Sora Camp Trail the Soy Sweeney Ridge Trail and the San Andreas Trail. Option two was just do three uh, loops so that you c uh, at least serve the adjacent neighborhoods going up the San Bruno Avenue. Option three was to do a citywide shuttle, but that, that was too long, more than one hour. So um, I proposed uh, a route for you to look at and hopefully the staff can evaluate the logistics of that as well as the cost. Again, Joel Slavitt mentioned that it depends upon which vendor you use and that would determine what the cost is. At this point in time, I don't have that information and he recommends that uh, staff look into that a little bit further. I'd like to uh, just leave this with- uh, Why don't you give them to the city clerk? pass that to the council. So I think part Any of the questions? concept was that you would work with the BPAC to assist with writing the grant and to minimize the uh, minimize the cost to the city by not utilizing staff very much. And I volunteered to work with Jeffrey to be able to write a grant. I do have a little bit of experience doing so. Um, and being able to minimize costs and the bare bone um, concept would be you get more points, and, and Ken could probably help me out on this a little bit if, if, if he recalls, about serving, uh, they call it transit dependent neighborhoods. So originating in the avenues, coming up through downtown to go to BART, to go to Cal Caltrain, loop up to Bay Hill, drop off the YouTube people that are working on Saturdays and Sundays, head up to Bay Hill, I'm sorry, Bay Hill, and then drop them off at the top of the trailhead and loop back down. That's the bare bones route that I'm most in interested in that I think has the highest, uh, the lowest cost and the most likelihood of, of meeting the criteria that is being set up by the uh, trans Transportation Authority. Correct. Although they have not initiated the start of call for projects, um, the SAMTRANS uh, uh, um, representative uh, showed me what the um, application was for the last call of projects. And each section has maybe about 15 to 25 points. The proposal that I'm uh, sending, that I'm giving you tonight, touches on all the lower, um, I don't want to use the word poverty stricken, but um, yeah, <laughs> those, those areas that uh, uh, allow greater number of points and it just touches them so that it as well as service all the adjacent neighborhoods to San Bruno Avenue going all the way up. The greatest difficulty for the people living at the top of the hill is Portola Highlands and College Heights is that there's no opportunity to come down to mass transit unless they have a car and with this shuttle I, I think I don't know how many, which is the optimal number of people per bus, but if you just have 30 people per bus times six or something per hour, you could talk about uh, close to 200 people uh, or 200 cars that you could eliminate off the road. But again, this is just a pilot project to look at the, a weekend opportunity. And um, there was a study that said that uh, a lot of people really like to bike long distances. And since we have a 17 mile trail all the way down to Woodside, uh, San Mateo Parks has a, a shuttle from uh, Ridwood City uh, Transit Center to 
Edgewood in Wunderlich, this proposal could close that loop and give uh, tourists or um, even Bay Area residents an opportunity to uh, take a short vacation through San Bruno. And it could be an opportunity for the city to look at uh, making San Bruno an ecotourist destination in the future. But again, having this pilot project could give you that uh, data to make that decision in a couple of years. All right. Question? Thank you. Any questions for? Maybe Irene wants to chime in or okay, anything but, on that. Uh, real, just real quick, you were saying about the BPAC only meets every other month. Um, to me, if this is something that the BPAC is going to represent or want to bring back as a recommendation, they should meet and discuss it as a committee. And as with all the committee commissions and boards, a special meeting can be called mm -hmm. of the city council, of committee commissions and boards. If it's something that's really pressing, that uh, you or the committee feel very strongly about. So there are those options available. And so I uh, just wanted to let you know in case that wasn't known, okay. but we've done it on the city council. When I was vice mayor, we called a meeting uh, quicker to name Bob Greenberg Field because he was uh, passing away. And we wanted to make sure we could get it done. It was that important to us so we could call him at city hall and let him know of the news. So if there are things that are important, we make the time and we'll get it done. We just, but but I also, excuse me, okay. but I also want to make sure we're going through the, the channels because you were saying BPAC, but they're not meeting. So I'm going to assume you're representing BPAC or you're representing yourself? No, uh, at this point in time, I'm representing our, myself. At the last meeting, we created a uh, trail connection subcommittee, but we really haven't had time to even discuss this because this uh, deadline is within a month and a half. So and, and we're I not sure request, of the cost yet? I did request um, to the planning director to, uh, to have a special meeting, but this was just yesterday and we haven't uh, gotten any response. Uh, I, I understand the whole staff has been overwhelmed with so much work. Um, when they are able to respond to me, then we can hold that meeting if possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, at our last meeting, our engineering and planning liaison uh, just uh, departed, so everything is still in transition at this point in time. Okay. Well, Jeffrey, I, I, be aware. Uh, I'd, I'd really like to have the whole committee take a look at this in a more comprehensive way. I do appreciate way. it, and I yeah, certainly to, will. For the council to rush into this and say it sounds good and let's, let's do it. I want to hear from our, our uh, you know, commissions, boards, and committees, because that's what you guys do. And if there's interest in that, real interest in it, mm -hmm. you can bring back to the council in the future, maybe you miss a deadline, maybe you don't, but right okay. now it's it's a little too nebulous as far as I'm concerned to actually go forward with this. Okay, I'm working on that. Thank you much. Okay, thank you. Uh, study session, we had it earlier. Uh, if there's nothing else, anything else? Um, uh, through the chair, Irene? I just want to remind people that we are holding our um, last Sunday of the month cleanup on San Mateo Avenue at 10 o'clock. Um, we meet behind the Centennial Park in the parking lot there next to West Coast Cafe, and we clean for an hour, and then we go home. So if you want to join us, I have all the equipment, and we'll, uh, unless it's raining, hopefully. You can do that. <laughs> and I just want to remind everybody, uh, before our next uh, council meeting, we have an election in the city, so please get out and vote. It's really, really important. All right, one more thing? Yeah. This Saturday, <laughs> American Legion, Pancake breakfast, it's a great breakfast. Get there at 8.30. Um, I'm probably going to continue cooking there again if they let me back in. Um, sorry, Robert. Um, all you can eat, 10 bucks, 8.30 to 11, American Legion. Uh, we'll see about that. Labor laws around here, Robert. This meeting is adjourned <laughs> until November 14th.